Hello and welcome to North Country Matters. My name is Donna Seymour. I'm a member of the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, one of the civic partners for this show. Today we have the new president of SUNY Potsdam, Dr. Kristen Esterberg, with us in the studio. Hello and welcome to the North Great. Country and welcome to North Country Great. Matters, Dr. Esterberg. Well, thank you. It's um, very nice to have you here. You're the 16th president mm -hmm. of SUNY Potsdam. It's been around a long time. It has been. And you're the first woman president, so another glass ceiling mm -hmm. has been shattered. Uh, you're a, you trained as a sociologist. You received your master's and PhD in sociology at Cornell University. Uh, you're the author of three books and you do your research on uh, methodology, gender, and sexuality. Mm -hmm. So uh, it must be nice to come to an institution mm -hmm. with such a strong gender and mm -hmm. um, sexuality mm -hmm. department as mm -hmm. Potsdam has. It, does. it is. Okay, good. So tell us a little bit about your goals for the sure. college. Um, I know in some of the uh, pre getting here interviews mm -hmm. you did with the media that you talked about mm -hmm. wanting to attract uh, more diversity and more mm -hmm. international students. So how do you envision that sure, working? Sure, sure. And, and let me just say, first of all, how thrilled I am to be in Potsdam. It's a wonderful institution. We have fabulous students. We have a wonderful community of faculty and staff. And really, my goal for the college is to build on the efforts that they've that they've already That's made. They're doing some incredible things. And in fact, this this academic year, our incoming freshman class is about one third students of color, students who identify as African American, Latino, Asian American, predominantly African American and Latino. So when you walk across the campus, you can see what an incredibly rich and diverse student body we have. Mm -hmm. So my goal is to continue to uh, capitalize on that, make sure that we're providing the right kinds of services so that these students want to stay at SUNY Potsdam. I think we're doing a pretty good job there, but as always, there are some more things you can do. And then the other piece is to really think about um, international recruitment. That's something we have not done as much. Um, and, and again, international students bring a diversity to the campus. They bring an international perspective, which I think is really helpful here in the North Country. It is. I'll tell you that um, <clears throat> when my own children were growing mm -hmm. up here, it was very nice for them to be growing up in the local school system and mm -hmm. to be with kids who spoke other languages, who came from other exactly. countries, who came from other parts of the uh, of, of our country because when they then went off to college themselves, they were right. not surprised or shocked by what they That's saw. Right. And the North Country can be a little bit insular mm -hmm. if, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so that, that kind of diversity that the colleges mm -hmm. bring to us is good for us as well for, in a so. lot of ways. I think so. Um, one, of the, um, one of the things I'd like to talk with you about is college accessibility. Yes. We know that uh, one of the barriers mm -hmm. is high cost. Uh, when I was a student at Potsdam, many, many years mm -hmm. ago, um, I actually was able to go to college for free because I was a Regent Scholar. And at that time, New York sure. State supported students mm -hmm. who did well academically right. by giving them right. free tuition to SUNY schools. Right. Well, those days are sadly long, are. long behind they us. Um, as you know, student debt has surpassed credit card debt as the biggest uh, burden uh, that we have. And it's not just low-income families that are mm -hmm. struggling anymore. Mm -hmm. Now we're seeing uh, middle-income and even higher-income families also getting into um, having to take out right. loans and, right. and debt. So um, how big a problem is right. that for your right. students, and what can be done to make college more accessible right. and affordable? Right. First, I will say SUNY is committed to providing mm -hmm access to higher education. Um, and there are a number of things that SUNY as a system has been doing that I think are very innovative. So for example, providing seamless, pa seamless pathways from the community colleges to the four years. I think that's really critical for families who are trying to really make sure that they're spending their education dollars as wisely as possible. But we have tried to keep tuition as affordable as possible. And so, for example, the rational tuition plan that was put in place several years ago has been really important for families to plan so that they know each year SUNY tuition will go up $300 and then they can prepare for that and understand what that means. Previously, it was very difficult for families to plan. Right now, tuition, room board runs about $18,500, which is which is certainly not as affordable as free. Sad, but when you, sadly not. No. Sadly not, sadly <laughs> not. But when you compare to our private counterparts, I think, I think very affordable. Yeah. 
Yeah. When you look at debt, about 75% of our students leave with some form of student loans. And on average, a student who, who, takes, uh, who takes out a loan at SUNY Potsdam has about $21,000 worth of debt, which there are, there are a lot of different ways in which people might think about it. One is you want student debt to be less than what a student would earn in their first year. And certainly we think we're accomplishing that. Other, other commentators will say you don't want student debt to be any more than, say, sort of a reasonably sort of a low mid-sized car in terms of what you would need to pay off as, as a manageable debt. And again, I think we're doing okay there. Would I love for every student to go to SUNY loan free? Sure. But I think when we look at state finances, when we look at, um, you know, the ability of the state to afford increasing support for every student, that's probably not in the cards. So our goal is to try and make sure that we're providing resources for every student who demonstrates need and to do as, as well as we can, um, both through private philanthropy and through our, you know, our, our own um, SUNY Potsdam dollars. And that's one thing that the College Foundation has been doing a very good job in the last few years of raising money yes. for things like yes. that. That's certainly yes. uh, uh, much to the, the Foundation's credit and it must make your job uh, anybody's job at a college in terms of trying to figure out how oh. to make sure you can make sure students can come exactly. and not be not be turned away exactly. at the door. So. They do an incredible job and if I if I could brag about them for a moment Certainly. we just passed our 90 percent goal in our comprehensive campaign and a great deal of those resources are going directly to students. I think if I, uh, when I look at our scholarship budget this year I think it's about $800,000 that the foundation is directly providing to student scholarships. That's extraordinary. Yes, it is, and particularly in difficult economic times, which these are, and in a place like mm -hmm. Potsdam, which the North Country in general is always it a is. little bit behind economically. Sure. So sure. that's uh, that's a very good uh, good effort, and it's making mm -hmm. a big difference, I know, for lots of students. Um, one of the big hurdles for a lot of college freshmen is the transition mm -hmm. from high school to college and whether or mm -hmm. not they're adequately prepared. Yes. And I know there was a study that just came out this week mm -hmm. that said about 43% mm -hmm. of students who uh, take the SATs mm -hmm. this year are not going to demonstrate that mm -hmm. re real um, readiness mm -hmm. for, for college. Um, and we know that when they're not ready to take mm -hmm. that work, then That's they right. also don't graduate on time, which That's adds right. to the student debt burden and a whole lot of other issues up and down the line. So um, what, what in terms of that lack of preparation mm -hmm. are you seeing in your, mm -hmm. in your mm -hmm. s incoming student mm -hmm. body and how can, and in, in actually in your career because you've worked mm -hmm. in other places, and how can we address that um, so, so sure. they're more successful. Sure, sure. And I will say, we know that the SAT isn't always right. the best predictor of college readiness. And at SUNY Potsdam, we chose, I think, four years ago um, to pilot uh, being test optional. So we look at the whole student when they're, when they're coming in, because we know that students' grades in high school actually are the best predictor of how well they'll do in college. And we've done a great deal of research since we've become test optional to make sure that uh, we're accepting students who have the most likelihood, not uh, uh, not just of entering, but then of succeeding and then, and then graduating. And I will say, in our Enrollment Management and Institutional Effectiveness Division, we spend a lot of time looking at um, which students are doing the best, which students, uh, how do we uh, provide the right kind of academic support. So for example, we have a really wonderful bridge program. So students who don't quite meet the criteria, uh, we give them an acceptance, but then we provide extra services, and we find that with our bridge students, in fact, we're more successful than with typical students who meet all of the admissions criteria. Or appear to. Or appear to. Right. So sometimes right. it's really just about making sure that they have the academic supports that they need. Mm -hmm. We have the same thing in our student support services program, where again, we're providing additional support for first-generation college students, because we know that when they come to college, they may need more support in navigating, for example, the financial aid system, navigating, you know, the FAFSA. And, and Remembering going exactly. through that with my own kids, we all need support. Exactly. Oh, exactly. System. Right. Yes. So, so some of it's social support, some of it's, 
support in navigating the system and some of its academic support. And where we're really working hard to make sure that when a student comes to SUNY Potsdam, we're providing them with the right kind of support that they'll succeed. And this year, uh, we just, um, at, at a given point in time, at every academic year, we say, okay, this is the, this is the time at which we actually count how many students are here mm -hmm. so that we can report that to the federal government. And we have an 80% freshman to sophomore retention rate. So of the students who came in their freshman year last year, 80% of them returned this year for the sophomore year. That's a substantial increase over right. the last year and very, very good for us as a campus. Right. And that's, again, one indicator that we're on the right track. Right. We're bringing in the right students, and then we're providing the right kinds of opportunities for them when they get here. So the, the next question then becomes, of that group who come in as freshmen, how many of them actually are graduating on time? Mm -hmm. Is that also a mm -hmm. process that you're working that's on? That's a process, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. How many are graduating in four years? How many of them are graduating in six years? Uh, and then the other pieces, how many of them maybe start at Potsdam, but their goal was really to go to maybe one of the research institutions mm -hmm. in the SUNY system. So we're able to track our, what we call our SUNY success rate so that a student who starts at Potsdam but really wanted a program we didn't have, for example, um, and transfers to a campus that has that, we're still able to count that student as a success. Mm -hmm. Are we doing as well as we're going to be doing in a few years? Absolutely not. Um, but it's, it's definitely all hands something on deck. that you're working on. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and frankly, it has been in every single public right. institution I have ever been a part of. Right. And that's a really important part of the public mission for us. And you know, actually, there's a corollary to that, too, because um, the students who maybe transfer in from another school exactly. who come here, exactly. we, we, they also are going to need that kind of support. I remember reading quite some time yeah. ago that um, that's really, sometimes that's the more difficult transition, mm -hmm. not coming to school in the first place, but actually switching mm -hmm. schools can be mm -hmm. a very difficult it transition. It is, and you know, we started a transfer, a s sort of a special orientation program for transfer students because they might be very experienced at attending college, but they don't know how to navigate SUNY Potsdam, and so we're really looking at how do we provide the support for students however they come to us. So that, that kind of uh, internal social, socialization That's is right. also there. That's yeah. right. That's, That's right. Good. That's good. Well, you know, one of the things that, that uh, has been um, a big topic in the last couple of years on mm -hmm. all campuses has been campus safety, Absolutely. Uh, violence, harassment, assault, sexual assault. Um, it's a long overdue conversation yes. because of how, uh, how much, uh, for so many years, many mm -hmm. of those issues just were not talked about. Absolutely. And, um, we've seen some changes in the law, the Campus mm -hmm. Save Act, the Cleary Act. Uh, so that there's better reporting, and it's mm -hmm. not just of uh, perhaps a, a campus violence incident, but they're also now looking at things like a student who may be involved in a domestic violence uh, right. situation that That's perhaps right. doesn't escalate to the point of of a physical mm -hmm. altercation. So, um, and that certainly has a lot to do with the um, the feel of the campus, mm -hmm. the culture That's of right. the campus, right. and how people feel. Re recently, mm -hmm. you um, just had a, uh, a situation where um, there was uh, an assault on campus, That's and right. the response, the internal response by the, to the campus was to come up with this wonderful mm -hmm. paint the campus mm -hmm. teal program. Mm -hmm. I want you mm -hmm. to tell us about yes. that because uh, that is such a, an exciting. Mm -hmm. Uh, in a positive step forward mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, something bad has happened mm -hmm. and yet we don't hide it, we talk about it, and we yep. try to change yep. behaviors. Let me say, I couldn't be prouder of our students. Um, the, Paint the, the Paint the Campus Teal initiative was started by two hockey students, two hockey, male hockey players and a male soccer player who were concerned and wanted to raise awareness. I can't tell you, as somebody who's been working on issues like this for now decades, how heartening it is to see the difference. When we, had, um, when we had those incidences, my first response was, we need to talk to the campus about it. And my goal for the campus is that we do two things. One, we become a campus where if a woman experiences sexual assault, either in the present or in the past, we provide a safe place for that, for that survivor female or male, because we know about 6% of right. sexual assault survivors are male. So we provide a safe environment where a survivor of sexual assault can get services, whether it's through the counseling center, whether it's through our student conduct, whether it's through student life, whether it's through the university police. 
we're committed or to. Or even off campus or for off something campus, like right. Renewal House. Exactly, right. exactly. Right. So my goal is twofold. One is if somebody has experienced that, whether it's in their past, their recent past, or their present, that they feel comfortable that this is a campus where they can get services. And at the same time, we have to ensure that we are putting in place those programs that will reduce sexual assault, which makes for a very complicated conversation between and among students and between and among faculty, staff, and students. Because really, students have to be speaking with one another about how they want to treat each other. We have to have a large campus dialogue about what's okay on this campus, and we have to send the message that sexual assault is never okay on a college campus. And I think, I think we're well on the path toward having that conversation and really putting in place the kinds of programs like bystander intervention, which gives students the, the skills when they see something to say something's not right. And they can, you know, if it's a female student who's separated from her friends, to find a way to help her get reunited with her friends before she gets into a situation. Or if it's a male student who's acting inappropriately, for a male friend or a female friend to say, you know, why don't you cut that out? And mm -hmm. I think that if we're attacking this problem from all those vantage points, we'll get to a much better place. I'm also very proud of the SUNY system, which has passed um, our SUNY Board of Trustees, passed a resolution really ensuring that all SUNY campuses put in place what I think of really state-of-the-art uh, policies and procedures to deal with sexual assault, including um, an affirmative consent policy mm -hmm. rather than a negative consent right. policy. The, uh, as you know, California right. just passed the exactly. yes means yes policy, exactly. and we'll have to wait to see how that actually gets put into effect here in New York State, but it's a wonderful uh, step forward, that's it is. for sure. It is, and the Chancellor has just uh, established a working group. She's just in the process of naming the members. But I think that this is a very positive step for all students who are in the SUNY system. Well, you know, I had, uh, I had a couple of uh, young women who work for Renewal House mm -hmm. in the studio a couple of weeks ago, yeah. and this is one of the topics that we talked about there, and they both said they've seen a marked difference just in uh, the last year about how the four campuses up here that they're interacting with are working on these issues and the outreach uh, that is now there to those kind of yep. community resources. Yep. So. Uh, you know, uh, just it's, it's, it's really wonderful to see this is a project I've been working on uh, with AUW New York State mm -hmm. as the public policy VP. We had an impact grant last year to work on this particular mm -hmm. issue in terms of getting out uh, more information yeah. and then to see this real change right. happening, right. you know, right. in real time. Right. I, I was talking with somebody uh, at a uh, another campus mm -hmm. who was saying that not only when something happens on the campus now and the campus responds positively, but they're starting to hear from alumni who yeah. say, oh, this is such a, you know, this is such a great thing. Yeah. And then they'll tell a story about what happened to them yeah. 30 or 40 years yeah. ago where it was not handled mm -hmm. in the same way. Mm -hmm. and. Even people like that are, are reaching out and saying thank you for yeah. finally moving Good. forward. I will say so. I sent out a letter to the campus and many it was right before parents weekend and many parents were thankful. And mm -hmm. I will say, you know, as a as a parent of two teenage girls, it's time to have this conversation yes, it and is. and really to make progress. Yeah, so um, it's, it's very, very exciting to watch uh, when something good yeah. like this happens and you know that we're not going to sweep this under the rug anymore. Now we're going to figure out how to have these conversations and and really move forward, and that's exciting. And the fact that it yeah. was three young men who came forward yes. to do that, such a wonderful yep. set of role models for Absolutely. everybody. Absolutely, and, and if I could give a shout out to our Student Government Association, mm -hmm. our Vice President was very early on involved in President Obama's It's On Us campaign. Yes. So even as early as this summer, he was already doing that work, so, so I couldn't be prouder no, of that, our it's, students. Uh, it's it's a great it's a it's a great project. It's a great program, yeah. and um, you know I hope this really uh, takes off across the country because it needs to. Um, one of the things that Potsdam College, or excuse me, that's that yes, I was yes. there. Excuse me, SUNY Potsdam has always done well mm -hmm. is to invite the community onto the yes. campus for programs. 
um, as a student myself, I was able to come and take, take classes and programs when I was in high school. My children had the same uh, yeah. opportunities, and now my granddaughter, who is in sixth grade, is taking a STEM after school course. She did a uh, writing workshop back in the spring, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, it's something that um, just really broadens the horizons for our kids who are in public school mm -hmm. right now to be able to get onto a college sure campus interact with good role models, others, uh, you know, a little bit older college mm -hmm. students. Absolutely. It, it gives them the understanding that they too can can aspire to go to college. That's it's right. It's not some kind of uh, a place where, right. oh gosh, I right. can't right. I can't see right. myself there. People like me go to college. Exactly. I think that's a really important message. So, what, in, in particular, mm -hmm. um, I want to talk a little bit about the STEM area because that's as right. we know, science, technology, yep. engineering, and math is these are the jobs of the future. Right. In fact, they're the jobs right now, but they're more mm -hmm. and more the jobs of the future, and they're the good jobs of the future. So we have to find ways to open uh, the doors for our young people now to make sure that they, they take advantage mm -hmm. of the mm -hmm. education that you provide and that the other mm -hmm. three colleges mm -hmm. in our county provide so that they can, they can do that. What, um, what's your college doing to fill that sure, STEM sure. pipeline? You know, you might be surprised to know we have over 600 science majors, mm -hmm. science and math majors on our campus. Uh, and they range from biology, geology, chemistry, physics, mathematics, computer science. We have a full range of science programs and they've experienced growth. I will say our biology program in particular mm -hmm. has experienced tremendous growth, like biology programs across mm -hmm. the country. So we are committed to, to ensuring the really the, the vibrant experience in the sciences and in math. And you, you are likely to know being here on the Clarkson campus, yeah. we have the 3-2 program in engineering where students can receive two degrees at the end, one from Clarkson and one from SUNY Potsdam. Those are clearly very important things for us to continue. But the piece that I think that we add that's different is integrating the arts within STEM. So thinking yeah, more, steam. right? They thinking more steam, about steam, right. yeah. and we do have faculty who are working on some really interesting modules with the integration of arts, science, and technology, um, to really reform how we think about teaching in the sciences. Mm -hmm. I also know that it's really creativity that students need in the century. They need to be able to think creatively. They're going to have eight, ten different careers. They're not just jobs, but different careers. And so what we need to do is to provide them the tools and skills that lead them to have that sort of flexibility. And a key part of that is scientific reasoning. Mm -hmm. But it's also how do they develop a creative idea and then see that to fruition. So I'm actually optimistic that by focusing on STEAM, we're really working on the creativity of our students. I would love to see much greater interaction with our students Clarkson students, SUNY Canton students, St. Lawrence students mm -hmm. to see when get you that get campus. exactly you get yeah. these creative students together. Clearly, students in Clarkson and SUNY Canton's campuses have a more technological bent. Although, again, we have 600 science majors, um, and clearly one of the oldest computer science programs in the nation. That's right. That's so, right. and we know coding is um, that's kind of the new buzzword right now. Right. People are getting into coding and they're trying to introduce that down at the um, the elementary level that's as right. well as the middle that's school right. level. That's so, right. So I think just trying to continue to think about how do we develop creativity in our students? How do we make sure that they are developing as scientifically literate, as creatively literate? We know that they've got to have good communication skills and all of the things that a good liberal arts and sciences foundation gives them. So how do we make sure that when a student leaves SUNY Potsdam, they have all of those things? Well, one thing we know is that uh, people are going to need good problem solving skills. They sure are. All of those. They sure are. They, all of those go into that mix. Um, I want to chat with you just for a moment about your teacher prep program. That is sure. such a, uh, an important yes, part of what is. you do. We know that um, as, as we try in the state to raise um, our, our standards through mm -hmm. things like the Common Core, that's going to ask new things of teachers. It does. And it's going to ask uh, teacher prep candidates to mm -hmm. really kind of become mm -hmm. these, these role models for exactly, exactly. what you were talking exactly. about. So um, how do you see your teacher prep programming uh, changing and evolving mm -hmm. as we go through uh, 
getting them prepared sure. to help implement things sure. like the new standards. Sure, sure. Well, they are certainly there. They are already prepared to, or they are. Uh, the faculty are clearly already preparing students to meet the Common Core standards. And I will say, New York State has historically had such strong teacher preparation programs that we are better placed, I think, in this state than perhaps in some other states. But our faculty are fully prepared to work with, uh, work with candidates. I know that there are some new standards coming in that are uh, mandated by the SUNY system in teacher preparation programs, and we'll be fully prepared to Good. work with them. I think, frankly, one of the things that school districts need right now is um, a lot of support, because these are some extraordinary changes. And that's a role that SUNY Potsdam can can play. Our faculty have seen, you know, the ups and downs in teacher preparation programs through their years of experience. And I think providing that perspective that, yes, this is a new twist, but we've been through these twists before yes. and we'll, we'll come out and we'll be uh, even better. I can remember new math. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so, exactly. So, and we all live through new math. We so, did. we can we certainly did. live through the standards and when we do, uh, it's going to only better prepare our students to go out and be those problem That's solvers right. and those those good uh, public citizens who are able to meet the demands of the 21st century workplace and the 21st century life that That's we're right. all trying to, That's right. to lead. Um, in our last couple minutes, tell me, is there some, mm -hmm. is there, so what's new at Potsdam what's College new? that's um, you want to brag about? What's new? Uh, well, we have some exciting new programs. Um, we have a master's degree in community health, which I think is really important for this medically underserved region. Absolutely. So these are students, when they leave, they'll be able to do a variety of health education, um, work in a variety of health education settings. We've already had a very good undergraduate degree, and we've just started uh, this brand new class uh, this fall. I think that's very exciting. We're working with the SUNY system on a new exercise science degree. Again, that's an area that students are very, very interested in. And we know that that's an area that can either serve as a precursor to a physical therapy program or an occupational therapy program or directly into practice. So those are some of the things. Graphic arts. Um, we've got some work going on uh, developing a graphic art uh, program because we've got incredibly strong art programs. We've got this extraordinary art collection at our gallery. We have students who are really interested. And again, this just gives them that edge, looking at graphic mm -hmm. arts. I will say the faculty are doing a really good job trying to think about what are the new things that we need to do to prepare ourselves for that next century. Our bicentennial, bicentennial year is the year 2016. And so one of the questions well, that I'm asking. not very far away. No, it's a year and a half. So one of the things I'm asking is, what do we need to do to prepare students in our third century? What kind of creative skills, talents, capabilities do we want them to have? And then how do we as an institution rise to meet that challenge? So it's going to be an extraordinary year. We're going to do a lot of creative, I think, conversation about what does that third century look like for us? Mm -hmm. and. How do we meet that demand? Dr. Esterbrook, this has been a fascinating conversation, and I'm very sorry to tell you that our time is up. And so we have to cut this off. But um, we'll, we'll have you back for 2016, Great. and we'll Great. talk about your Great. third century. How's Great. that? I'd love to. Thank you Thank so you. much for having me. All right. These conversations are a production of North Country Matters, produced here in the studios of WCKN on the campus of Clarkson University. This show is a civic collaboration between the St. Lawrence County branch of the American Association of University Women, the St. Lawrence County League of Women Voters, and the Communication and Media Department here at Clarkson University. Until next time, please remember, our North Country Matters. <laughs>